I think I shall call him Adam. So who's that guy? And what's his role in Guardians 3? You'll find out by the end of this video. Before we begin, if you like Comic Island, be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out our Patreon page in the video description below. Now let's talk about the history and story of Adam Warlock. So I recently put up a poll on our community page asking you all who you'd like to see join the Guardians next in the MCU. Knowing that characters like Iron Man couldn't join, and Thor had already joined the team as of Avengers Endgame, I stuck with four possible previously set up characters who could be easily added to the team. The results were a little surprising to a degree, as Adam Warlock has only barely been set up in the MCU and really hasn't been front and center in a lot of Marvel comics. But nevertheless, people are clearly excited to see the film version of Adam Warlock join the Guardians of the Galaxy. So today, let's go over his story and history in the comics before I poo-poo all over the idea. Adam was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, originally identified only as him. Initially, this perfect being artificially created by a group of scientists on Earth calling themselves the Enclave. He rebelled against these scientists, battled against Thor, and then fled into space. Roy Thomas and Gil Kane would later reimagine him considerably into Adam Warlock, where they showed him encountering a being called the High Evolutionary, and he was given the Soul Gem, which allowed Warlock to capture the souls of other beings. He began traveling through space until he encountered an organization called the Universal Church of Truth, led by a corrupt being called Magus. Adam allied himself with the likes of Gamora, Thanos, and Pip the Troll to defeat Magus, only to learn that this being is actually a future version of Adam, corrupted by the Soul Gem. To prevent this from occurring, Adam traveled to the future and captured an older version of himself and his soul. Adam then learned about the nature of the other Infinity Gems and came into conflict with Thanos over them. Warlock was eventually imprisoned by his younger self in the Soul Gem, although he was briefly freed in order to turn Thanos into stone. Thanos was eventually freed and began collecting the Infinity Stones once again, this time forming them into the Infinity Gauntlet for the first time in the comic book timeline. Warlock managed to escape the Soul Gem and rallied a group of heroes against Thanos after the Mad Titan successfully destroyed half of all life in the universe. Adam gained the Infinity Gauntlet for himself, becoming unimaginably powerful. The universe was restored and Adam purged all good and evil from his being so that he might exist solely on logic. These aspects survived the purge and became entities onto themselves, the evil turning into a new version of Magus, the good becoming a new being, called Goddess. Adam was then instructed by a supremely powerful being called the Living Tribunal to distribute the gems to other beings of Warlock's choosing, as the Tribunal felt no mortal should wield the power of the gauntlet on a permanent basis. Adam obeyed this command, keeping the Soul Gem for himself and giving the others to a group of people Adam called the Infinity Watch, consisting of Pip, Gamora, Drax the Destroyer, Moon Dragon, and a reformed Thanos. Goddess and Magus eventually threatened the universe, and one of the first tasks of the Infinity Watch was defeating them, at which point they were absorbed into the Soul Gem. The Infinity Watch eventually disbanded when the gems were taken away, though Warlock was able to get them back briefly after this. By this point, Adam had become a guardian of sorts for the 616 universe. Still supremely powerful, he was vital in stopping threats such as a group of cloned copies of Thanos, a deadly energy source called the Heart of the Universe, although that story might not be canon, and an interdimensional being called the Hunger. Adam joined an early iteration of the modern Guardians of the Galaxy to face a deadly army called the Phalanx. During his time with the new team, Adam was transformed into Magus, and he took over the Universal Church of Truth. Magus was killed because of this, and he was resurrected into the form of a child. A different version of Adam eventually surfaced when the 616 universe was merged with another, and after a prolonged adventure that threatened to rewrite all of reality, Adam was reunited with his old friend Pip the Troll, and they began journeying throughout the universe together. Later he became involved in a plot to reunite the Infinity Gems. Warlock allied himself with the time traveler called Kang the Conqueror, and was later brought into a new version of the Infinity Watch by Doctor Strange. Adam was designated the wielder of the Soul Gem. Gamora, under the alias of Requiem, attacked the group, and Adam's head was cut off by the woman. 
Thanks to his incredible powers, Adam survived this and went on to help the others defeat Gamora. He then made the Infinity Stones sentient, so that they could decide their own fate rather than being constantly fought over. Surprising Adam, the Soul Gem left Warlock rather than staying by his side as he expected. It flew off with the other gems, leaving Adam staring at the stars, feeling that some part of him was missing. By the time Adam was at his full strength, he was one of the most powerful beings in the known universe. Not only were his physical attributes enhanced far beyond the limits of a normal human, but he also became essentially immortal. Though his body can be damaged or even destroyed, his soul cannot be reaped by death, and thus he will eventually return no matter what happens to him. And every time he does return, he comes back stronger. To the extent that modern versions of Adam can resurrect the dead and manipulate the fundamental nature of reality itself. Adam also has the power cosmic, bestowing awareness, knowledge, and abilities beyond the scale of human perception and imagination. These powers have waxed and waned over the years and are often supplemented or enhanced by the Infinity Stones, in particular the Soul Gem. So he's a big character with a long, complicated history in the Marvel Universe. He's tied heavily into Thanos, the Infinity Gems, and the cosmic order that governs all life in the Marvel Universe and beyond. And yet, he only has had the smallest of appearances in the MCU. In Guardians of the Galaxy 2, we are introduced early on to a race called the Sovereign. They're the weird golden people that the Guardians help at the beginning of the movie, only for Rocket to steal a bunch of batteries off of them. At the end of the movie, the end credit scene reveals that the Sovereign have decided to awaken Adam, wanting to use him against the Guardians. He's said to be the next stage of evolution for the Sovereign, a race that already seems to consider themselves pretty superior beings to begin with. Interestingly, Adam was intended to be introduced earlier in the movie, but Guardians 2 already had too many things going on, so James Gunn took him almost completely out of the movie. That's relevant because it implies Adam was never really considered an essential part of the Infinity War saga in the MCU, and that Adam's role in the MCU has always been destined to be different, more tied to the Guardians than anything else. And while it seems like a lot of people are excited about Warlock joining the Guardians, I'm not entirely convinced that's the plan. Remember, Guardians 3 has always had a lot it needs to do. We have a new member already joining the team in the form of Odinson. Gamora seems to have been reverted back to her 2014 self, if I understand events correctly, and we have to deal with all of the fallout of Infinity War in general. In addition to that, Guardians 3 needs to have its own story and presumably is going to wrap up the arc for a lot of these characters. And on top of all of that, we're also supposed to be introducing Adam and whatever threat the Guardians are fighting in all of this, whatever their enemy or the villain is going to be. If you ask me, that's way too much for one movie, and the production team is bound to encounter the same problems they had with Guardians 2, and will need to scale things back. Or, and I think this is the case, the actual story is more simpler in its design. We don't need to introduce Adam and the villain, because Adam is the villain, or at least the antagonist of this Guardians 3 movie. That's what I think is going to happen with this character. Guardians 3 can pay off setting up Adam, while also introducing a new threat that will be the main obstacle for our heroes in one fell swoop. From my perspective, that lines up so nicely with the needs of the movie and the nature of Adam's character as he's been introduced in the MCU and who he is in general, with his astounding power, that I think that's what we can expect out of MCU Warlock. I'm not saying he's going to be a traditional villain, or that he won't eventually join the team, he might not even be their main ultimate enemy in Guardians 3, but I would expect, by and large, for Adam to be in opposition of their Guardians rather than their ally for most of the movie. And I can't say I'm personally against these changes. Adam Warlock is a bit of a bland character in the comics, if you ask me. It's not a random coincidence that he's constantly either turning into or spawning Magus, as it's a clear expression of the writers unable to work with a guy this powerful beyond just occasionally turning him evil. And... I have trouble really sinking my teeth into this character in any story that he's featured in. There's never been a story where it's like, yes, this is the Adam Warlock I want to see in the MCU. And without that energy, I think doing something different with him or making him the antagonist and more like Magus might be more of an interesting story. 
Alternatively, he might just start out as their enemy and ultimately join their side, and I think that would be pretty cool too. It might be set up that Adam leads whatever iteration of Guardians winds up at the end of this movie, because I have a feeling it's going to kind of be one last little farewell to them as they all ride off into the sunset. Whether or not they make another Guardians film, it seems pretty clear this will be the last one with James Gunn and the last one with these core five characters that were set up in the first Guardians film. But whatever the case is, now that James Gunn has officially been announced to return as director for Guardians 3, I have faith it's going to be a good film and a really moving one. Basically, it's probably going to be the last movie for a lot of these actors playing these characters and I'm, it's going to be an emotional experience. Uh, probably one similar to Endgame in that regard. Thanks for watching this video and be sure to let me know what you think of Adam Warlock in the comment section below. Finally, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.